Could you be America's next top podcaster? This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Truebill. Get control of your subscriptions at truebill.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is a, a very fun show for me because I get to talk to something of a podcasting legend. No matter what he says, I consider him a podcasting legend. Um, Brian Ibbett, of, you probably know him from Coverville best, um, but he's got something new to talk about. And we're going to pull back two different sets of curtains. We're going to talk about podcasting behind the scenes and also behind the scenes of his new show. Brian, welcome to the show. I really, really appreciate you being here. Oh. Uh, it's the pleasure is mine, Chuck. Thank you for having me. Well, as as I, you know, I, I know we argued as to whether you're a legend or not. Before the show. <laughs> um, yes, but you've been one of you're one of the original podcasters that is still out there doing it, and there are not a lot of those around. Yeah, I think uh, the problem is I just never came up with an exit strategy. I never figured out a way out of podcasting. So uh, <laughs> uh, I can understand but, that. I can understand, but. That. Uh, no, even seriously, yeah. No, it's it's been such a um, such a passion, and of course, you know, music always been a, a big passion in my life. So, Coverville continuing on all that time, but then as you become a podcaster, you start saying, "Oh, well, I'm passionate about this other thing. I wonder if there's enough content to make a show from it, or I'm excited about this new thing. Can I do a short series about it? Things like that. And, and, um, it feels like there's always something new you can do with, uh, uh, with the medium. You bring up an interesting point right off the bat that in the early days of podcasting, you started a show mm -hmm. and you started a show and, you know, and that was mm -hmm. it. You didn't mm -hmm. think in terms of seasons or series or, no. you know, limited, uh, five or 10 episode runs or anything like that. We've we've migrated as much as we all railed against the the TV uh, model <laughs> traditional yeah mm -hmm. yeah we 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 kind of fell into some of it in places and I guess that's because it does work it does um, I think the the biggest reason at least the biggest reason I do it is that seasons give you a uh, obviously a logical starting point ending point so you can craft not just each episode to follow a uh, a model or a path but each episode in a series or in a season to follow a path as well so you you can kind of think about it, it lets you think about the season as a whole instead of just thinking about each episode as a whole and plus it's nice to have a break after <laughs> after doing 18 episodes or 14 or 12 or whatever however frequently uh, you do it it's it's actually nice to have a little bit of a break a planned break well, and it does give you a chance to tell certain stories that have an ending. Yes. And, and that, I mean, I've been, I've got a couple of ideas of my own that I've, if I just had time, you know, I could implement them. Um, That's but, yeah. you know, you're right that there's, okay, there's a beginning to the story, there's a middle, there's an end. And to go beyond that is just going to be nothing. I mean, it's not going to be interesting right. to the listeners or viewers at all. So, right. Yeah, so there was one. So we figured out one thing that TV did right, but the whole rest of the model is is uh, <laughs> is out there. <laughs> yeah, well, that that's a podcast in itself, right there. Right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I'm anxious to talk to you because, again, as as a very, very, very experienced podcaster, mm -hmm. I thought that it's really interesting that your new show is sort of meta in that way. Um, that you know you're you're going to well i'm not going to talk about it you talk about it. Tell, <laughs> tell us about the new show sure so this is um it's a relatively new show this is uh the fourth season of um america's next top podcast the full title of the show is um uh, you think you've got the talent to be america's next podcasting idol or next top podcasting idol but we decided that was too long a name so we shortened it to america's next top podcaster and it is the surface of it is exactly what you think it is based on that name. It's a, it's a, um, it's modeled after a reality show, 12 contestants. Um, uh, after a couple of weeks of getting to know them, we start voting them off or, or, or letting them go based on certain challenges and criteria that they have to pass and, and certain kinds of shows. We give them, um, uh, challenges every week, either as a team or as individuals challenges every week that they have to complete. And uh, and then we've got judges. We've got three luminaries in the industry. Um, we've got uh, Scott Johnson, who's the head of Frog Pan, the Frog Pan Network. Uh, we've got um, 
Uh, I'm sorry, is my mic clipping? Oh, I guess it's about okay. It looked like my mic was clipping out a little bit. We've got Justin Robert Young of Night Attack and uh, formerly of uh, Leo Laporte's network. Um, and we've got Jenny Josephson, who um, has her own network. She's been producing stuff and, and, and just as an amazing uh, breadth of knowledge on uh, deliverability, sound. Oh, she's she's brilliant when it comes to sound, knowing uh, not just maintaining your levels, but also loudness. There's a there's a, another metric you need to keep an eye on called loudness, and she keeps track of all that stuff. She um, so those are our three judges. We've got Tom Merritt of the Daily Tech News Show, uh, formerly of uh, um, uh, why am I blanking on what Tom Merritt used to do? Uh, Cause he does daily tech news show so well. It's like, that's what he feels like he's always done, but uh, he's our coach. So in the middle of the week, the players, the teams will get a chance to get some advice from him and, um, uh, and, and figure out the best way to complete the challenges. And we reward things like thinking out of the box, putting yourself out there. Um, a, a common theme in the show is committing to the bit. So if you start a, uh, 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 a, a comedy show, for example, in a character. Don't just like say, "All right, I'm going to stay within this kind of the safe zone of this character." No, really, put yourself out there and really, really try things because that applies to a non-competition show. It applies to the show that you go out and develop after uh, after being America's Next Top Podcaster. So. In addition, this this top layer is reality show, but really all this stuff underneath is a boot camp, uh, a twelve week boot camp on how to become a better podcaster and more versatile, uh, uh, and and kind of know what you want to produce for your audience. First off, um, I, I apologize because I didn't realize that there were always already seasons under the, your belt, um, which. That's a whole other discussion about podcasting is discoverability and not not really right, realizing everything that everybody's doing. Um, yeah, but you've got that's a that's a pretty heavy hitting um, panel of judges you've got. That's that's phenomenal. It is. They're they're amazing, and you know I've been doing this for seventeen years. Right, Coverville started at the end of two thousand four, September two thousand four, and I'm finding that with the judges, I'm learning something every week. Um, uh, their their advice to the contestants goes all across the board. Whatever you know, beginners, amateurs, professionals, um, their stuff applies to everybody. So no matter what level podcaster you are, uh, as a listener, you'll always get something out of it, and as a contestant, you'll always get even more out of it because you'll be um, you'll be in the thick of it, uh, producing a new show every week. New episode. So. Why would you drag anybody else into podcasting, <laughs> given how it's consu- consumed in both our lives and a lot of others? Um, is uh, this? I mean, where do, is that a good idea? <laughs> I think it is, and I think that there's um, as much as as big as the space is, and as as many people as there are in the space. And heaven knows that the pandemic has created a whole new generation of people stuck at home baking sourdough and creating podcasts, but. Um, there is a lot of reward, self-reward in communicating what you love and what you know. If you're knowledgeable about a certain thing or if you're passionate about a certain thing, there's a, an absolute reward in getting that, find that audience that loves it too or wants to know more about it as well. Um, discovering people who love cover songs, for example, with Coverville, obviously for the last 17 years, that's been a thing that, that I've been rewarded by, but finding the people with this new project with a uh, top podcaster with, uh, who um, have gained expertise in their field or figured out a way to do a thing that they've always wanted to do. I've had people reach out and say, wow, I didn't think I had it in me to create a podcast, but after listening to that show, now I've got it and now I know what I want to do and how I want to present it. And these are people who probably would have gotten two or three shows in, maybe thought that there was too much work involved or that they weren't getting the numbers that they wanted or, or early response, things like that. And, um, you know, you've just got to persevere through all that stuff. And ANTP definitely teaches you how to prepare for that and how to, uh, maximize 
the kind of show that your audience is going to want to hear. That was going to be something I, I wanted to ask. Is this a, a show? I mean, for, okay, forget the entertainment value. Yeah. From an, yeah. from an information standpoint, is this something that you can recommend to people as a way to get tips and tricks on how to be a better podcaster? Absolutely. Yeah. This is, this is, you get, um, with the show. So the way we've got it packaged, you, you get the, the, uh, introduction where I give the contestants the challenge, but then you, we edit in, we have producers who listen in on the conversations that the teams have and, and pull out the best bits as they're throwing out ideas and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. We record the coaches sessions. So you get to hear the coaching that Tom Merritt gives, um, each of the contestants, we uh, capture out the uh, production meetings that the team has and pull out the best bits from there. And of course, you get the final judging. So uh, as you listen to the podcasts, you're hearing the judges' responses are, and them saying, oh yeah, you know, this intro was great. Your music bed is good, but you need to cut it off here or, or lower the sound here when you start talking. Um, and it's all stuff like that 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 as a seasoned podcaster, as an amateur, as someone who knows what they're doing or someone who's just getting into this, there's something for everybody to learn in, in every episode of the show. That's I'm I'm kind of hung up on that. The idea that, that mm. there are there are very, very few podcasts I listen to just for pure enjoyment. But yeah. I usually want to listen to something that I'm going to get something out of. And it doesn't necessarily have to be tech, but mm. I, I I want to go away from a show and have a takeaway uh, or two of some kind. Sure. Um, and it sounds like that's what this is going to, do, to deliver uh, right along with the entertainment part. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been such a fun, it's been a, a really fun show to produce. We, um, in one of the recent challenges, we have a, a couple uh, all-stars challenges that we do between seasons where we bring contestants back. And the most recent one, we brought um, every player back that had gotten eliminated during Comedy Week. Every season we have Comedy Week. And the object isn't to necessarily make the judges laugh, but to really put yourself out there and figure out a, a, a really clever concept or a really clever idea and execute it. As long as those things are met, whether the judges laugh or not is secondary. It does help. But it's always secondary. But of course, we've had contestants who've been eliminated during uh, Comedy Week, so we gave them the opposite challenge. We said, create a serious podcast, a serious um, uh, instru- uh, inf- informational podcast or entertainment podcast. But we gave them one caveat. They had to use, um, we gave them the entire lyric sheet to Smash Mouth's All Star song, <laughs> and they had to pull seven lyrics. Uh, out of that song and integrate them somehow into their podcast. So you get to hear how they figure out which parts of the song to use to make it, to make it fit with the narrative that they want to tell while still not breaking, breaking the creativity of the show that they're trying to produce. (laughs) So we like giving some strange challenges uh, for the show to, to really keep them on their toes. Well, I mean, that's, that's great because some of those challenges are, I mean, maybe not, Smash Mouth's All Star, but um, <laughs> right. you know they're the kind of crazy things that you know you wake up at three in the morning and think, "Hey, I could do that," but how do I do it? You know, what's the best yeah. way to integrate it? So, yeah, it's it, and and of course, then you choose some of the tasks for entertainment value as well. So, yeah, you could learn and something from that too. You really could. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's 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 the equivalent of maybe um, getting that that guest you've always wanted to have as, as an interview but at the beginning before you start talking to them they tell you by the way i've got this new project we can't talk about it i know there there's rumors about it but we can't bring it up so that's kind of like the <laughs> the smash mouth thing you've got to tiptoe your way around those other things so it's you know we're, we're teaching them how to paint the fence so that they can do the the karate uh, to to use a karate kid metaphor <laughs> <laughs> This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Truebill. Get control of your subscriptions at truebill.com slash macvoices. Can you believe we're in the last week of January already? That means a number of things. The Super Bowl is coming up. You need to set yourself a reminder for Valentine's Day reservations. And most of your subscriptions are going to renew. You can handle the first two yourself, but why not let Truebill help you with the third? Truebill specializes in helping you manage your subscriptions. 
Keep the ones you want and stop paying for the ones that you don't or that you may have forgotten about. With Truebill, they're all right there in front of you so you can evaluate how much you're spending on subscriptions and deal with the ones you no longer need. Who knows, you might be able to pay for that Super Bowl trip or at least for Valentine's Day dinner with your savings. Start canceling your unused subscriptions at Truebill.com slash MacVoices. Go right now, Truebill.com slash MacVoices. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash MacVoices. Thanks to Truebill for their support of Mac Voices. That's a really interesting example because, yeah, that, that happens on a more frequent basis than, than you would imagine. It does. And, yeah. you, you, you know, you don't want to be, um, you know, the guys from 60 Minutes trying to pull somebody's pants down. I've, I've got you on camera and I'm going to ask you the tough questions. Yeah, um, it's I mean, a good way to never get another interview again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I've, yeah. I often wondered how they how they have stayed on the air for so many years. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, so you know, you try to be respectful of the guest and what they want to communicate, and mm-hmm. still get the information that your audience wants. So. Exactly, and the fun for the audience. If uh, right now we're we're looking for contestants, so I'll put that out there. If you're at all interested in being a contestant, uh, we have a little over a week. Uh, that applications are going to be open, and then we're going to start narrowing down the field. So, America's Next dot com. But for the people who aren't contestants, for who are just listeners, there's a fun thing that happens when you, when you hear this challenge, when you hear these challenges that we give them. The audience starts thinking, "Oh yeah, how would I do that? How would I go about creating a show that fits that?" that mold um and they start coming up with these creative ideas and shows have even come out of that as well uh just from podcast listeners listeners to the show who came up with an idea based on a channel that we get yeah i I, I like it i like it um now (laughs) you said the not the uh nominations or applications Uh, applications Applications are open for about another week so that we record this yeah i'll I'll Mm -hmm. do my best to get this turned around real quick so Thanks. But, but folks, if, whenever you hear this, you know, don't, if you even think you're interested, definitely go and check and make sure you yeah. can get in if you want to. Um, it's a what, lot of fun. What, if, if I decide to become uh, an applicant for this, yeah. what kind of time commitment am I getting myself in for? Because that's something that, you know, it's there, very, yeah. We have day jobs, you know. You gotta, you, exactly. Yeah. You got to be prepared for something like this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's 12 weeks. If you, if you make it all the way through the competition, so the maximum you'll be in there is 12 weeks. Um, we record on Monday nights. Um, and that's when I give the challenges and also when we have the judging for the previous challenge. And throughout the week, you're working with your team on, um, getting your recordings in, getting uh, ideas out there. And, and really uh, what we've seen from, um, from contestants is that it's maybe one or two hours a night in meeting with your team or recording later in the week is, wow, get some clipping there. Uh, recording later in the week is uh, uh, you got to have your submissions in by the weekend. So weekends are free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just the the challenges just take place during the week. Okay, so it's a little bit of a commitment again, depending it's on how commitment. far you would get get on it. But for sure, the rewards, you know, and I talked about the the growth rewards, the reward that you get by being contested, the things you learn. There's also physical rewards. the The winner gets um, a mixer and microphone, headphones, things like that. But throughout the th- uh, throughout the path or throughout the uh, competition. Um, you might find other opportunities. This last season, um, a uh, a contestant produced a science podcast that got her an internship with Tom Merritt's uh, Daily Tech Headline, Nikki Ackerman. So by being a contestant, she got into this opportunity where she is now producing a show for uh, the Daily Tech Headlines, uh, Daily Daily Tech News. So there are opportunities that happen all the way throughout this thing. So in that regard, it mirrors the uh, some of the the network TV reality shows, where it does. just because they didn't right. win didn't mean that it didn't have significant benefits to them. That's right. Yeah, she's she's the Jennifer Hudson of her American Idol season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nikki, we need to get you a T-shirt with that on it right there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> as, as a quote from Ryan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Whether she wants to wants that or not. Yes. Oh, that well, that's great. That's great. Yeah. 
So last thing I guess we have to ask, since we're promoting yeah. people getting involved with this, when can folks expect to see this next season premiere? Yeah, good. Um, we So uh, we're going to start recording at the end of February, and usually there is a four-week time frame to do all the editing down into a show. So I would say at the end of um, March, the uh, fourth season episodes will start airing. But the good news is you've got the first three seasons. If you're if you're waiting, you can't wait to start listening. There are three seasons out there, and all of them are available on iTunes and and Spotify and all the usual places. Of course, uh, at the website America's Next Top Podcaster dot com, and uh, you can listen to them all there. Excellent. Okay, I saved the best question for last. Oh, good. Okay, and, and you and you may have you may have kind of already addressed this um, inadvertently, but if you had to give one piece of advice to someone who's thinking of starting a podcast. Mm-hmm. What would it be after all your years and your your shows and everything? What would that piece of advice be? Um, you know, it's it's one that has never changed through all the through all the time that I've been podcasting. But um, don't be afraid to hit record and just get that first episode out of the way. It's going to hurt. It's going to be, you know, you're not going to like the way your voice sounds on your on the microphone when you listen back. It's fine. Everybody has that first episode that they've got to listen to, and they've just got to get that one out of the way. Then you can get on with the the second episode and the third episode. And by the by the fifth or sixth, you'll start finding your rhythm. You'll start figuring out tricks that you can do on the microphone to um, to maintain a good audio quality level as well as engagement. And uh, uh, it all starts with that first. It all starts with getting that first episode out of the way. <laughs> That is phenomenal advice, you know, cause <laughs> and for any of us, I mean, even, even if it we're is. already doing things, you know, if you have an yeah. idea, just get the first one done. doesn't mean you even have to release it, but just. Does, no, you absolutely, yeah, you certainly don't. Yeah, and yeah. and just as long as you get something out there recorded, then you won't, then you won't be sitting there saying, oh, I have to record my first episode. No, you can say first episode's behind me. Let's, let's, let's see what's next. Yeah. I keep my first episodes online. Even though they're thoroughly embarrassing, um, but you know sometimes yeah, it's same here. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's good to go back and listen and say, okay, I've learned a few things along the way. You know, I may, yeah. I may not, I'm far from perfect, but mm-hmm. you know, I've I've come a long way, and um, yeah, so that's that's really good advice, and it's a great thing to do. You know, as, as you said at the top of the show, if you have passion or or an interest, it's a great way to remain involved, get even more involved in it. So, yeah. Um, and, and don't be afraid to it. say, let's do a season, right? Let's do, uh, don't, don't put yourself as a commitment for a thousand episodes, do 12, just shoot for that first season and then uh, get that first season out of the way. Just like you got that first episode out. And if you think you have the stuff to compete in this, once more, the website is. It's America's next top podcaster.com and uh, all skill levels. Uh, you know, anyone who's been podcasting for less than 10 years would love to have you and you'll learn, you'll, you'll grow, you'll figure out your audience, all that stuff. Brian, thank you so much. I, I have no idea why we have never crossed paths before, at least on my <laughs> show, but it, yeah. it was f- far overdue and it was a, it's a real pleasure and um, I hope we get to do it again soon. Absolutely, Chuck. It was great meeting you. Thank you so much. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. For better or worse, I don't think I qualify for this, but if you do, (laughs) go and check it out because podcasting is, I'm not going to lie to you, it's a lot of work, but it's a huge amount of fun. And the rewards, you you will get rewards that you have not even contemplated, I promise, if you stick with it. So go and check it out. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.